everyone and welcome back to John Florio channel. Today I want to talk about a topic that has been discussed several times and connects Shakespeare and Florio. This topic is very important and I would like to give an exhaustive explanation behind this connection Florio, Shakespeare and Proverbs. John Florio was the master of proverbs. He published a collection of proverbs in 1591, Giardino di Ricreazione, a collection of 6,000 Italian proverbs. Um, he also um, included proverbs in his first fruits and second fruits and unlike his predecessors, um, Florio uh, did something unique. Why? He believed that um, proverbs could be included in everyday conversation, so molded in the dialogues. And this is something new that he created and that we find in Florian's works and in Shakespeare. Both Florian and Shakespeare were obsessed with proverbs and we will see how both Florian and Shakespeare uh, translated in English many Italian proverbs that are still used today in Italy. So, uh, Flora's predecessors um, published collections of proverbs. Um, what made Florio different from uh, the others was quantity. His collection of proverbs was the biggest collection of proverbs ever published. And second, the um, unique uh, technique that Flory used was to mold and uh, include proverbs in everyday conversation. So basically characters talking to each other and suddenly they add a proverb. This is also something unique that connects Flory to Shakespeare because unlike Shakespeare contemporaries, uh, Flory too was obsessed with proverbs and um, there aren't other writers, other dramatists who used proverbs so frequently as Shakespeare and Florio did, or if they did, not as much as Shakespeare and Florio. Certainly Florio uh, used proverbs in, in everyday conversation in his life and he wanted to, to transport, to transmit this Italian culture of proverbs, so he did it by publishing a collection of proverbs and by translating Italian proverbs in English, including these proverbs in English everyday conversation. And this is what Shakespeare does. We will see today the stunning similarity between uh, Florence proverbs and Shakespeare proverbs. Keep in mind that 90%, if not all the proverbs that you will find in Shakespeare works, are borrowed from Florio's works. Let's make some examples. Fast buy, fast find. This is Florio in Second Fruits. And Shakespeare in Merchant of Venice writes, fast buy, fast find, a proverb never stay in thrifty mind. All the glitters is no gold, Florio writes in Second Fruits. And Shakespeare in Merchant of Venice writes, all the glitters is no gold, golden tombs do dust and fold. It is good to strike the arrow when it is hot. This is an Italian proverb that is still used today, commonly. Um, the Italian proverb is battere il ferro finché è caldo. Uh, this is also what Shakespeare writes in Herod the Sixth. Struck now or else the arrow cools. More water flows by the mill than the miller knows. Florio again second fruits. And Shakespeare introduced Andronicus writes more water glitters by the mill than woods the miller of. When the cat is abroad, the mice play. Play the mouse in absence of the cat. An ill wee growth apace. Shakespeare Richard III. Small herbs have grace, great weeds do grow apace. Make of necessity virtue. This is also an Italian proverb. Far di virtù necessità, and Shakespeare in Two Gentlemen of Verona writes, make a virtue of necessity. Keep in mind that uh, there are not just proverbs that here I included in this presentation. I wrote proverbs, but 
there are also witty aphorisms, uh, catching phrases that Florio wrote and that we find in Shakespeare. This is an example. Give losers leave to speak. This is not exactly a proverb. Uh, this is just a catching phrase. And Shakespeare in Henry VI write, but I can give the loser leave to cheat in where such losers may have leave to speak. Basically the same concept, uh, the same idea that Florio wrote. It is Labus laws to speak of love. Again, this is not a proverb. Uh, this is just an ingenious phrase. And Shakespeare takes as a title, Laws Labus Lost. Much ado about nothing. This is a proverb um, that is still used today in Italy. Uh, tanto rumore per nulla. Uh, Florio writes it in English and Shakespeare takes as a title Much ado about nothing. Tutto è bene che riesce bene. This is an example of a translation from Italian to English of a typical Italian proverb. This is also very common today. Tutto è bene, quel che finisce bene. It's still used today nowadays in, in Italy. And Shakespeare takes as a title All's Word and Swell. Lombardy is the garden of the world. This is not a proverb, this is a witty saying, it's just a catchy phrase. And Shakespeare in the Taming of the Shoe writes, and arrive for fruitful Lombardy, the pleasant garden of great Italy. This is a famous one. Florence, second fruits, writes, Venezia, Venezia, chi non ti vede non ti prezia, ma chi ti vede ben gli costa. And Shakespeare loves, 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 writes, I may say, Venezia, Venezia, chi non ti vede non ti prezia, o Mantua, who understands thee not, loves thee not. Florian writes the same proverbs about Venice also in first fruits, um, but in a slightly uh, different way. Venice, he who see thee not, prize thee not. But he who steals tea, it costs him dear. And this is the same proverb that Shakespeare used in Love's Love's Lost. Um, it makes me laugh that some Shakespeare scholars wrote that since Shakespeare borrowed this proverb from, uh, from Florio's works, then Holofernes was Florio. But what about the other proverbs that we have uh, seen before? So Florio should be the other characters in Shakespeare's plays just because Shakespeare borrowed that proverb, that with the same from Florio? It doesn't make any sense. Does it? Now, this is an interesting one. It's a sexual innuendo, a sexual reference. The Florio writes in Giardino di Ricreazione, the Italian collection of proverbs. And he writes Far la bestia a due dossi, which um, is an image that has a sexual reference. And Shakespeare translates literally the same phrase in Otello, the beast with two backs. These are just some examples of the similarities between Florio's proverbs, witty sayings, fancy quotations that we find in Shakespeare plays. But Shakespeare, as a Florio, was obsessed um, about proverbs and he also makes references to proverbs in his plays. Let's make some examples. Thereof comes the proverbs, blessing on your heart, you brew good ale, into gentlemen of Verona. In Hamlet, while the grass grows, the proverb is somewhat musty. In Macbeth, like the poor cat in the age. In Roman Juliet, I'm, I am proverbed with a grand side phrase. So not just include proverbs with the same technique that Florio used for the first time in his works, include uh, proverbs in the dialogue and mold them naturally uh, in the speech, but also references to proverbs in his plays. There are also many publications, many books that discuss uh, Shakespeare's obsession toward proverbs and how this is something unique um, connected to Shakespeare's style. These are just three examples of books that are about Shakespeare and proverbial language. It is very telling that there are so many books that discuss Shakespeare and proverbial language, literally zero books that discuss John Florio and proverbial language, who was the one who introduced 
this culture of proverbs in England through his works. I hope that uh, you liked this uh, presentation in which I showed you some examples of similarities between uh, Florio's proverbs, aphorisms, uh, witty sayings and Shakespeare. There are many many others and I probably make other videos to show you other examples. Let me know if you have comments, if you have suggestions, if you have questions and stay resolute. Bye!